Hey, this is Jerry. I am going to color this little image today by Sherry Baldy. It is one of her digital images from her website called My Besties. And this uh, image here is called Chloe and Escargo. And it is the perfect image for my mom for Mother's Day. So I thought I would color this up and share it with you as I uh, go along and show you how I did it. Uh, this card or the image actually was printed on 80 pound solar white Nina cardstock and I started out with my skin tones which I usually do I usually start with my skin tones and today I'm using the E04 E11 E01 and E00 and then I'm blending in a little bit of the R21 for some cheek color and um, just blended that back out with the E00. And then as you can see, I got some of the skin tone up into her uh, eye area. So I just used my colorless blender to sort of clean that up a little bit. As I continue with the coloring on the rest of her skin, I wanted to mention that I cut this card out as a sort of a one layer card. So I, when I printed her out on my printer, I put it in the landscape mode and took the image and moved it down to the bottom half of the paper so that when I printed it, I could cut out the half of the card that the image is on and then fold the top half of that paper back to create my card so uh, it's all one piece already straight out of the printer which uh, really works well if you're not going to cut the image out and if you really want to do a background on your card right on the same piece of paper that your stamp is on which is what I'm going to do here my mom has blue eyes so I decided to give this image some blue eyes as well so I started with the B02 and then darkened it up to the B04 and the B05. Actually, I think I started with the darkest colors first and then worked my way down to the lightest colors. And then as usual, I usually put my, um, I usually go through my colors twice just to deepen those up and make sure that I have my shadows correct on all of those. And then once I have the shading right, I started on these little snails down here and I used E41 and E43 so right now I am applying E43 to the shaded areas and then I blended it out with the E41 and you'll notice that on some of most of my images that are have little small tiny little areas I only use two markers to color in the images uh, I when I first started using Copics, I was kind of under the impression that you should at least use three and uh, sometimes more, but I kind of thought that three was the minimum, but it's really just too hard to do that in these little tiny spaces. So I, I've kind of gotten away from that and I really only use two when working on little small areas. Uh, I used some YG, I think it was 05, um, and YG01 on the eyes, and then used an N8 marker to color in the black part of the snail eyes. And then uh, on the snail shells, I used the BV00, BV02, BV04, and then I went in when I got done with the sh uh, BV23 to do the shadow. You'll notice that I keep the middle part for uh, in the the middle part of that shell is the highlighted area, and so I do it last and keep it white um, until I get done and am ready to color it all in. Because the less color you put in that area, the the more it's it's going to be highlighted for you. So I'm moving on to the second snail shell. Just applying my color and getting my shading in there. 
and um, I think that's the BV23 where I've, I'm putting in a little bit of shading and getting that just right. And then for the leaves, once again, I'm using the YG01 and the YG05. Uh, I like to use the same colors throughout the card to keep to keep everything sort of in the same color family. So if I use the YG01 and the YG05 for greens in one area, it is very likely that I will use those same colors for greens in another area on the card as well. Here I'm using the E43, E44, and E47 for her hair colors. And I'll, I apologize, it's uh, sort of out of focus or out of the top of the camera. Um, I didn't realize how far up the paper was, so I'm really sorry for that. But um, it's probably not my favorite hair color combination, but um, I like I wanted to use the E40s I knew for her clothes, and so um, this these hair colors just fall within that same color group, so that's why I chose to use these. And then for her uh, clothing, I just used two colors really. I used the E41 all over and then just put in a little bit of shading with the E43, and I used the same colors for her hair bow, her shirt, and um, and I just did some really simple shading with the E43 in the areas that I thought should be darker. Later I will go in and put the fill in those little dots with some of the colors that were used in the other areas of the card and so I thought that uh, as far as the background simpler was better the colors there and so I just did some real simple shading on that. Uh, once again I used the BV00 for the flower um, because I had used that on the snail shells and then I used the BV02 and just gave the petals some um, a little bit of interest there. And then for the sh for the bows on the uh, snails I used an RV-17 and um, just went in with my RV-10 for the highlight color and um, I really just put a little bit of that RV-17 in the center part of that bow and a little bit out on the farthest edge and then filled in the center of the bow with the highlight color. And then I'll also use the same RV17 to give the flower a little later on to give the dot the center dot of that flower um, to give that the same color as well. For the book I used R, uh, used a W2 and a W1 marker. Um, I didn't want to use the same color that I had used for her outfit so I wanted it to stand out as a different color even though it's not something bright. I um, I went ahead and gave it just a little bit of a different tone for that. For her jeans, I went to my favorite, I kind of, this is my go-to color combination for blue jeans. It's the B91, B93, and B95. And sometimes I start with uh, my lightest color and work my way into my darkest, which is what I did here with my jeans. Sometimes I start with my darker color and work my way to the lighter. Uh, it's I don't really have a rhyme or reason for why I do it, but I do it both ways, just depending on what the image is. Here I've started on the ground that will be underneath her, and I started with the series of, of green markers that you see listed on the lower left-hand side here. And I don't really have a set method when it comes to doing backgrounds. I just really start laying color down until I until I like it. Sometimes I don't like it. I just I just start really throwing some color down there uh, to try and get the look that I have in my mind. Uh, the This color combination here that I was working for, I wanted more of an army green and uh, I couldn't really quite get it to look like I wanted 
but there I got a little bit closer and I knew I would be cutting off the bottom section of this card as well so uh, I was pretty happy with with that and then here you can see I'm filling in all of the dots and what I did was I just used all you know all of the greens the pinks the blues all of those markers that I've used throughout on the card I just started using those to make the little dots on her outfit and then I used my Prismacolor white pencil to highlight some of the areas on the card. I used a Prismacolor green pencil and added some little stems on the bottom. And then I'm making just some little flowers there. I colored in her glasses with a pink Prismacolor pencil. And, um, and then I... I had a, added a little highlight to her lips as well, which I like to do. And then I decided that I needed a little more highlighting. I think that's a W2 marker, or excuse me, not highlight, but uh, back, but a little bit of shadowing on the ground. Now here is a sky technique I wanted to show you. I had shared one with my last video uh, using some chalk, and I thought I would share a different method that I use sometimes when creating a sky background. What I do is I take a BG000 marker, and I know it's really hard to see here, but that's kind of the point. You want it pretty light so that it is easily blended in later. And then I took a C1 marker and just went, un went over the bottom part of those clouds, not the top, just the bottom uh, outline of the clouds that I created with the BG triple zero marker and I also used just a very little bit of a of the BV zero zero marker I decided to use that marker because it would tie in with the purples that I had used on the other areas of the card and that's right there is the BV zero zero marker and then once I get those done I take the C0 and go in and blend all of that out so that I don't have any harsh lines. And uh, that will sort of give you a wispy cloud effect. And then once you get your clouds, you know, they don't have to be perfect. But then once you get that done, you go back in with your BG. 000 marker like I am here and you're going to fill in the rest of the sky with that color. You don't have to be super careful. It's a really light color so uh, you don't want to go over the white parts of your clouds but you do want to sort of go over the top outline that you created in the beginning of that cloud just to blend it all in. Now this marker was super, super dry. Um, I really didn't even think that I would make it through uh, getting this card done. It was really, really dry. So I, and I didn't have a refill available, so I had to just hope that it made it through. Um, and I did just barely, but I wasn't too worried about it. The, the sky naturally is a little streaky sometimes. So uh, this, you know, I figured it would be okay if, if there were a few white streaks in my sky on my card as well. And I thought this turned out really super cute. I hope my mom loves it, and I hope you enjoyed my video today. Thank you. Have a great day.